afternoon and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well. Everything is going swimmingly. Oh, really need to stop saying that. Anyway, enough. I've just finished work. I've just come home from work um, and I've just quickly thrown some casual clothes on because I've got a couple of couple of jobs to do around the house so I haven't had a shower or anything yet um, and there's a reason for that I'm not just happily wallowing in my filth um, but the scent or fragrance that we're about to talk about now is one that I've worn to work today because I wanted to get a really good gauge on performance so at the time of recording now it's about quarter to one and I applied said fragrance at about 5 a.m so I can still smell it, um, but not that well. Okay, so I'm obviously gonna try and sort of talk about my experience of wearing the fragrance today. It's not the first time I've worn it. I have worn it around the house, um, but it is definitely my first um, sort of proper wearing of it. As You know, and I've mentioned in previous videos, I like to wear fragrances to work as a testing ground, or, you know, it helps me um, get a real gauge for performance because I've been working on my own today. I've been able to take notes of what I can smell and when I can smell and that kind of thing. Um, and when you work on your own, you can do that. If I was working with colleagues, they would think I'm absolutely bonkers. Well, they already think that, but they probably think I'm even more far gone than they thought originally. Anyway, um, we're gonna talk about this one. It's a new one from Latafa and it's called Eternal Oud. And here it is. I don't really know what to think about the presentation. Originally, it came in like a Perspex dome so it looked like something that you would see in a museum with a small stuffed animal in it or some some kind of weird thing like that all that remains of it is this plasticky um base plaque um i don't know what they were thinking of um in terms of this presentation because it, it was it was getting doomed to fail it came in a massive box i can't remember where i bought it i did buy it um and it with this perspex dome on it which was by the time it got to me it was smashed to bits um you know just a complete waste of time so let's have a look at the bottle i mean a lot of there's been a lot of talk about this fragrance in general and especially the presentation i have to say i'm not a fan i'm not going to be too harsh on it because i don't know what all this is about whether it's got some kind of spiritual connection or something but if you can imagine a a, a fairly heavy cap with what looks like a bonsai on it, um, you, you're there, you're there. I, I, I mean, I'm getting sort of Miyagi-Do Karate Kid vibes from this, you know, little trees, banzai, bonsai, as he, you know, Daniel famously balls it up in the film, um, and not so much in the series. And, and that's your bottle, it's 100 mil, and it's weighty, it's solid, the sprayer seems pretty good, but this is the problem when houses are going all out on you know sort of these kind of bottles without really you know they want it to look great but i don't think they want to spend the money to make it great so what happens is with the cap is so tight when it sits on the atomizer i mean you can I don't advise that by the way but you can with this one when you take it off it tries to pull this off uh, and that's just going to give you a whole world of problems so you know this looks I don't know, they would have been better to have it engraved, I think. Anyway, I'm getting too carried away with the presentation. There's been an awful lot of talk about this one, um, and I bought into it. You know, I've I've got a guilty secret. I've been blind buying, because I blind bought this one. Um, so was it a good one? I'm, was it a good blind buy is a great question. Um, I still don't know the answer to that one. I was expecting something completely different. I didn't expect it to smell like this. I have seen people getting carried away with it. And stupidly, I, I, I tended to watch all the reviews. See, look, that is almost come off already. Um, I tended, I, I, I watched some reviews of it after I bought the fragrance, which is kind of like, you know, ready, fire, aim. It's, it's the wrong way around to do this sort of thing. Um, so anyway, I've got the dry down all over. And I'm going to spray it again just so we can get, you know, the opening. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk a bit more about the fragrance. It's important that we look at the notes. And what we'll do is we'll let that settle down and then we'll go through the notes uh, and, and how it actually smells. It's important at this stage, while this is drying down, for me to just explain myself a little. This may come across like a bit of a negative, negative review, which I don't normally do. And it's not. Okay, it's not a negative review. There are some really good positives for this fragrance and there's a lot about it I like, but there's a lot about it that I don't. 
um, and what we'll do is we'll have a look at all the pros and cons of it. Okay, so let's have a look at the notes. So on the top you have grapefruit and you have plum, and then in the middle you have orchid and you have heliotrope, and then in the base you have vanilla, you have amber, you have oud, you have benzoin, you have tonka, and you have labdanum. So where's this going? With top notes like grapefruit and plum, you expect this to be quite a fruity and bright, almost citrusy kind of leaning perfume. It's not. It's a cacophony of notes that hits your skin at once. So <sighs> heliotrope, I think, adds a little almondy-like vibe to it. These fruits are not noticeable as fruits. If anything, they're like dried fruits. I think, you know, there's no... Well, with plum, for example, you expect that juicy and fleshy. None of that. With the grapefruit, sharp, bitter perhaps, a little bit of sweet, bright. None of that. It all just becomes one. I don't get any florals from this at all. So I don't know where the orchid is or if it's just a tiny, tiny sort of support note to lift things up. I don't really get that. You will get this kind of dull, um, stewed and dried fruit, which I know sounds bizarre. But if you've taken fruits and you've made, you know, you, you, you've stewed them down with a little sugar and then let it go cold, that's sort of where we're talking here. It's almost like all the moisture's come out of it because the perfume itself is very dry. And that's good, you know, that's, that's nice. It's, it's not unpleasant at all. In fact, it's quite a nice smell as, as, as that happens. Um, but the vanilla and the amber start to take over really, really quickly. I don't get any oud from this, um, especially at this stage. What you're getting is this kind of sweet, dusty sandalwood. And the whole fragrance to me sound, smells really, sounds? The whole fragrance smells really, really dusty. Almost powdery. Um, I just think because of the materials there, it's not powdery, it's gotta be dusty. But because it's very, very woody, there's a little bit of leather from the labdanum, but not a lot. And that's pretty much it. There's a creaminess in the dry down and there's a sweetness that runs all the way through the fragrance. Um, I think the tonka adds to the creaminess, but again, nothing is pronounced in this fragrance. You never find any one particular note. You know, there's not one material here that you, you can pick out easily. And that sometimes is a good thing. And th in this case, I was expecting a bit more of it. I thought this was gonna be a really oody fragrance. And uh, especially at the cost point, this is one of the Latafa's more expensive fragrances. It's part of the Pride collection. Now, obviously, you know, there's quite a few of these sort of new fragrances that they've launched and, you know, they've chucked a bit more money in it. But this in the UK is between 50 and 60 pounds, which I suppose in the, in the grand scheme of things isn't a massive amount of money. Um, but for this house, it probably is quite a lot of money. Maybe it will come down in price sooner or I, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I must admit, I was expecting a little bit more from it, um, just in terms of smell and in terms of performance. It smells nice though, okay? It is a good smelling fragrance, but when you've got that many kind of different notes, you'd expect some kind of clash and some kind of journey, and it, it doesn't really, it's an incredibly linear fragrance to me. Once, what you smell in the opening is pretty much all you're gonna get throughout the life of the fragrance. There is one slight twist in the tail, and that was, I noticed that around the fifth fifth hour this morning and I started to pick up on what I assumed was violet leaf um, now there's no violet listed uh, and it's more like violet leaf than violet it's not like a palmer violet or anything like that it was just that kind of bitterness that I, you, I pick up on I mean if you know me you know I, I don't get on very well with violet at the best of times um, but violet leaf I can cope with and in, in this case it, I could cope with it but it just sort of stuck out a bit. That was the only real different sort of note that I could find. And when it's called Eternal Oud, that to me would mean a couple of things. Longevity and Oud. And I don't really get either. I get a fragrance that lasts quite a while. Um, and as an aside, I've seen it referred to as a beast. Now, I think people are confusing the words beast and bang average, because in terms of performance, this is bang average. It's quite loud for the first couple of hours. And when I say loud, you feel like it's really projecting, but it's not. It just puts you in a bubble, okay? So you're, you're surrounded by it, you're not looking for it. After the fourth hour, that bubble starts to fade quite fast. Um, and then sort of the fifth, sixth, and seventh hours, or you know wherever we are now, obviously that's the opening, it's, beyond the skin scent by the you know by the end of you know today or by the time i got home i was looking for it uh, and i expected a bit more for that to be honest i was expecting it to be 
not maybe projecting, but certainly more noticeable. You do um, get whiffs of it as you move around very subtly and you have to be looking for it. Put it this way, after five hours, you would be the only person that's smelling it and the only reason that you can smell it is because you know you're wearing it and you're you know in tune to it. If someone was brushing up close to you, they would not smell this fragrance, in my opinion, and from my experience of wearing it today. And to be fair, wearing it around the house. I mean, there's positives for that. My wife can tolerate me wearing it. She doesn't normally like sort of uh, Middle Eastern style oud fragrances at all. Um, but she hasn't been repulsed by this one at all. In fact, she said, oh, that's quite nice. Which is, as, you know, a pretty, pretty ringing endorsement. Um, but I just expected a little bit more from it, in all honesty. So, what do I think? It's a good fragrance, yes. Does it smell nice? Yes, if you like a dusty, woody fragrance with not a lot else going on, this will be right up your street. Um, I think it's, it's well done. I don't like the presentation. Um, I don't know what's going on there. And I don't particularly like the build quality of the presentation either. I think a more simplistic approach to this, the glass and the bottle itself is lovely and the atomizer, when it's not being vandalized by the cap, is fantastic. So this bit of it is great. The rest of it, I'm not a big fan of. But you might be. If you want something big and gaudy, you know, maybe that's for you. I have to say, to, to kind of round off my opinion on the fragrance, is it's a nice smell. Um, it's really, really nice, actually. I enjoy wearing it. I just think my expectations of it were higher than it actually delivered. Um, and that's purely down to me. So, you know, if you work for Latafa and you're seeing this review, I'm not slagging off your perfume at all. It's a good perfume. I just had slightly higher hopes for it. And maybe, you know, I've got a big collection of perfumes and maybe I was expecting too much or putting too much, you know, pressure on the fragrance. Um, but it is a nice fragrance. It's just not one that I've been blown away with. It's one that I think I wear fairly infrequently. I don't think I'll be getting much wear out of it. Um, but every now and again, I think it will be good to, you know, pop down the pub with or something like that. Or if I fancy a change, I'll go for it then. So the next question would be, who do I think can wear it? Uh, whew, anyone, you know what I mean? This isn't, it's, it's masculine leaning because it's very woody. Um, I, I think it will smell great on, on a woman. I think the more mature fragrance enthusiast will probably enjoy it more than the thruster because although there is sweetness in it, it's not a particularly overly sweet um, fragrance at all. It's not bitter, you know, don't get me wrong, it's just not as sweet as some, as some of the, the fragrances that I imagine the younger thrusters would like to wear. You know, I like the opening, actually. The more I smell it, the more I like it. It does actually really, really remind me of something. I thought it was um, Amouage's Jubilation, but it's not, um, I don't know, Juby's, you know, such a great fragrance. And, and this is a good fragrance, and that, there's a difference. It's in the same world as Juby, but it doesn't smell like it. If you're buying it uh, as a clone of Jubilation, you will be disappointed. If you're buying it as um, a potent oud with eternal longevity, you will be disappointed. If you're where you know, if you, if you fancy it as something a bit different and something rather nice, then yeah, you go for it. You you, you will enjoy it. There's nothing in this fragrance to dislike. Um, I just I think I expected a bit more from it. So you know, anyone can wear this. You're you're safe to wear this to work. You could wear this in the office. You're not going to offend anyone with that. You know, it's a really versatile fragrance because it's not too heavy. You could wear it probably on a warmer day. I wouldn't wear it on a hot day. It's just. If that grapefruit in the top was bright, what happened there? If the grapefruit in the top was brighter, you would definitely be able to wear this on a hot day, but it's not. It's just that sort of like wodge of, of materials that arrives in your skin. So I wouldn't wear this in the heat. I would wear it on a cold day. Um, you know, then that's about it really. I think maybe today was pretty chilly. So maybe the weather's had something to do with the, the performance. Maybe the people that have been raving about it being a beast, maybe they live in the hot country and maybe it does perform really well in the heat. I don't know. I haven't worn it in the heat. Um, I don't really fancy wearing it in the heat. Maybe I will when the sun returns, um, just to give it another go. But there you go. Um, I had to talk about it because I've been reading and seeing an awful lot about it. So, you know, my curiosity got the better of me and I, I blind bought it, which also kind of leads me back to blind buying not being the greatest thing to do. Don't get me wrong, I haven't ended up with a perfume I don't like. I've just ended up with a perfume that I thought was going to be a little bit better. So there you have it. That's my take on... Eternal Loot, a good fragrance, a really good fragrance, but maybe not as great as I'd hoped it would be. So there you go. 
Thank you very much for your time. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope it's been some use to you. And if you have got this and you love it, please, please, please tell me why you like it. Um, and, and it's always nice to get another opinion on something. So if, you, if you've bought it and you really enjoy it, tell me what you really like about it and I'll, you know, revisit it and, and try and find that. Because I, I want to love it. I don't. I like it. And that's about all I can say, really. Um, so, yeah, hit us up on Instagram. If you're not following us, we are there. Uh, and, you know, we will see you soon on the next video. Many thanks, cheers, and... <laughs>